Hey everyone, and welcome to a first of which hopefully won't be many, but but maybe depending on what you guys think. This is a first ever um, video in review progress update video. This is this is a video that is to kind of be my brain dump of what I think of current games that I am working on that are already out or about to come out at this point in time. Uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is not out yet. You all will be playing it right now when you see this video or have seen your favorite streamers or YouTubers or creators playing it or you're playing it yourself. And given the year and the time of everything going on right now, there are so many new games that have come out in the last four or five weeks that from my perspective, it's been impossible to complete them all before they come out just because there are secrets or there's um, impossible achievements or methods to do certain things that while I have, well, I feel pretty confident in my skill, I'm just not as good as I used to be in the sense that uh, sometimes I'll find things and sometimes I won't find things. And I won't know what true completion criteria is until I've seen what the internet has to say. So I wanted to do this video specifically on Resident Evil 3 Remake and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. For those of you guys who know me and are fans of the show, yes, my beard is not here. Uh, I wanted to shave just for a change of pace. Um, I haven't shaved since we shot the intro for the latest season of The Completionist, and I just, you know, I, I just wanted to a, a cleaner look for a little bit. The beard will come back tomorrow. It's so, it grows so fast. I'm like a Chia pet. It's crazy. It just, phew, it'll come back soon, I promise. So let's talk about Resident Evil 3 Remake. Now I've had Resident Evil 3 Remake for, I wanna say almost three weeks. The game came out on April 3rd and I've had it for at least, at least 10 days before that. Um, the reason why I didn't have it out this weekend uh, there's a few reasons. First things first, the YouTube algorithm uh, sometimes will just hide my videos or really anyone's videos whenever there is a popular game that comes out and people aren't searching for that game. And so when they cross recommend, they cancel each other out. So for instance, uh, my Ori and the Will of the Wisps video, when that came out, it came up the same weekend as Animal Crossing. And so while I got recommended and it hit sub boxes and people who watched it loved it, it was being uh, buried in the algorithm for like how to catch certain fish in Animal Crossing, how to get these achievements in Doom. And so uh, people just weren't clicking on it because they didn't want that. They wanted content on Animal Crossing or Doom. And so that's kind of made me kind of change my perspective of how I'm completing games going forward for the channel and, and, for, and for videos, just because I wanna make sure that you guys want to watch the content that I put out in a timely manner so that I go and put in all this time and suddenly you guys are not searching for it or it's not popping up because this game came out and you don't want to be spoiled or that game came out and you don't want to experience it. So that's a big reason why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing this type of video as a, as a one-off situation. Maybe more if you guys like this, you let me know. And the second reason why my Resident Evil 3 remake video is not ready yet is because I got the game early. And when you play a game in a bubble like this with embargoes and, and press junkets and, and, and copies getting leaked and people, you know, hacking the game and, and, and betraying the publisher's trust sometimes or the developer's trust, I get, I get put in a vacuum where I, I feel like I can't talk to anyone about the game. And so I have to kind of put my head down and focus and look at the bottom line of I'm going to complete this game as quick, as efficiently, and as, as, as good as I can. But the problem with that is that there are things to miss. I'm always going to miss things. And given the size and scope of some of these games, it makes it impossible to find everything by launch. Because the hope is, as a creator on, on YouTube, when you're making videos, you want your videos to come out at the same time that the game comes out. Because people are going to be searching for those videos and they're trying to make informed decisions about the game. They're trying to look to their favorite creators who are familiar with the game to get their opinion and they want to know should I get it should I not so uh, that's kind of a, a big reason as to why these videos aren't out yet because because of, of, of these kind of 
outside perspectives looking in at the content. With that said, Resident Evil 3 Remake is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's going to require several playthroughs. And at this point, I'm almost done with the game. I'm, I'm probably on oh, playthrough number 9, playthrough number 10, something like that. Um, Resident Evil 3 Remake is one of the most completionist-friendly games that I've played in the last uh, probably 6 to 8 months. There's been a lot of of obvious things that you need to do in this game to complete it, which has been great. However, the journey of getting those things there kind of requires a bit of, of, of an escalation. Um, Resident Evil 2 Remake had all these great set pieces and, and, and puzzles and action and it felt super contained, like a perfect ribbon. Resident Evil 3 Remake so far for me it's doing what Resident Evil 2 did, but on a much smaller scale, and I really enjoy the game. I really do, and I can't wait to talk about it more next week, but it's a situation where I feel like it feels super rushed, and I don't mean the production of the game or, or the quality of the game. I'm talking about the steps and beats in the story of how we go from Jill and her apartment to Jill in the end game, right? Like there's there's the game starts and it's like boom and you go and you're you're kind of going the whole time and not that it's bad, but it, it just makes the experience feel so short, right? It's like going to see an action movie and you expect it to be 90 minutes, but instead you walk away and it's like 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, the time was still good, but you kind of are like, I, I wish there was more here. I, I wish I could experience a lot more for it. So why do I need to do 10 playthroughs of roughly 10 or 11 playthroughs of Resident Evil 3 Remake? Well, traditionally speaking, in Resident Evil games, let alone the remakes, um, when you beat the game, you are given a grade based on how many heals you used, based on how many times you saved, based on how many times you died, based on your overall time and progress in the game, and based on the difficulty level that you've chosen. In more recent years, uh, Capcom has gotten kind of smart about it, and they've added unlockable incentives for doing more difficult tasks at higher levels for each difficulty. So, you know, whether you do something on, on easy, on normal, on hard, on nightmare, on inferno, or whatever the difficulty is for that Resident Evil game, you have to do it on almost every specific difficulty because it's not cumulative. At least that's the case with Resident Evil 3 Remake. With regards to Resident Evil 3 Remake from a completionist perspective, it's actually not that bad, but it requires you, once again, like in most games, to just be a really good speedrunner. And it's hard to be a speedrunner for a game 10 days before launch, uh, let alone uh, to complete the game, and then write an entertaining script, hopefully an informative script, and then work with the editors. And 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 because of the coronavirus, I'm not filming in my office. I'm filming stuff from here, which is very different and very weird. I feel like I'm on the Philip DeFranco set, you know? It's it's well lit here, and, and you see stuff in the back, and that's kind of how it is. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my progress so far in the game. I'd say the biggest challenge is not getting tired of the grind, because this Resident Evil game has achievements and challenges where you have to grind killing hundreds, if not a thousand, I think. I think, I think it's a thousand um, of zombies. And it breaks down to things like kill them with these weapons, kill them with that weapon, um, you know. And 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 when you when you have that mindset, you have to kind of tackle it like a checklist. Okay, do this run, do that run, do this run, do that run, and do this difficulty. Don't use first aid sprays this run. Uh, don't open the box on this run. Uh, you know, don't um, uh, don't. Don't save more than once or twice on this run. Uh, beat it under an hour or two hours. Luckily, when it comes to completing the game, they do add a lot of cool things to make the process easier, unlike previous games in the franchise. So, you'll hear more about my thoughts next week. I'm very excited to really talk about it, because I don't think that it's controversial by any means, but it's definitely a lot smaller of a game than I thought we were going to get, and... I think that's why Resistance came with Resident Evil 3 Remake, because you bought Resident Evil 3 Remake and you got a multiplayer game for free attached to it to kind of make it feel like the overall package was worth it. 
Is it worth it? We'll see. I'm not talking about that game though. I'm only gonna be talking about Resident Evil 3 Remake. From there, we have to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is, uh, I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, my Super Bowl of games. There's very few games out there that represent me holistically inside and out. I would say 3D platformers, so things like Ukulele, Banjo-Kazooie, Mario, um, Crash Bandicoot. Those are my, my identity. I love those characters. I love those games. When Mario Odyssey came out, it was, it was like I was a kid again, and I got to experience the coolest things in that game. And it was wonderful. And then there's Final Fantasy. And I don't talk about them enough on the show, but for longtime fans of the show, you may have remembered that uh, before I took down the 120 videos, I made a mini documentary style uh, thesis kind of essay video series on the entirety of the Final Fantasy VII franchise. And I asked my friends to be in the video, and it's one of my most uh, proud videos I've made and, and I'm so sad that those videos had to come down but I want to say first and foremost when it comes to those videos for New Game Plus I am going to be doing this documentary type video again only this time it's going to be an actual film edited down from 90 to 120 minutes as opposed to releasing the seven videos that I did, each analyzing each part. It's gonna be a lot more analytical, a lot more thoughtful, have a lot more guests, and hopefully, depending on my relationship with Square Enix, ask some questions from the original developers and, and hopefully tie it into Final Fantasy VII Remake. With that said, Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting its own video because of how dramatically different it is from the original PlayStation game. There are new characters, there are new plot lines, there are so much, there's so much more character development across the board. There are these story beats that just give so much more context and clues to people who know this franchise really well. And there's a bunch of new stuff too. And, and there's, there's so much to unpack, uh, unpack when it comes to the remake that I don't know where to begin. So what I think we'll try and focus on today is really talking about what it takes to complete this game. Hopefully without spoiling anything, because I don't want to spoil anything. In the video, I will spoil everything to hell, but in this video, I don't want to spoil anything because I know a lot of you guys are playing it right now. So when it comes to the completion process of Final Fantasy VII Remake, from the moment you start playing the game, you're forced to make decisions early on that will affect your trajectory and events that take place in the game. Not like story beat wise, not crazy huge ones, but ones that fans will remember from the original, ones that factor into achievements and, and unlockables. And these are all great. I love the choices that were made here so far, but it does kind of incorporate to the need to replay this game again and again. And again, I've seen a lot of comments about how people think that the game's not long enough, and that's going to be a huge talking point in my video about the length of it. Personally, after putting, at this point, I have put in 70 hours. The game literally came out today, and I have put in 70 hours in the last two weeks. Um, and I'm still finding more things. I'm still finding more and more fun things to talk about and and things to do there's a lot to do in the game and it's not even a slog it's not annoying it's not intrusive it's very specific things when you're playing final fantasy 7 remake you're going to make a lot of choices that determine events that take place later in the game so at the very least you're going to have to play this game no less than than two times no more than three when you beat the game you unlock hard mode as well as chapter select so you can actually kind of um, go through the narrative at a pace that you feel uh, is is for you to relive certain moments or certain beats or in the case of what the game really does is there are some chapters where you made specific choices and so now certain quest lines are no longer available because of your earlier choice or you said something to Tifa or Aerith early on in the game and that affects 
what kind of dress they're wearing, or you did something differently in this quest line, and that's why Cloud is not wearing the same dress when it comes to the entire Don Corne Corneo, Don Corneo's entire, uh, you know, wife plot line. Now, Midgar, where this game takes place, traditionally speaking, in a normal Final Fantasy VII run, is five hours. They took this five hour experience and made it a 40 hour experience. And what's in here, what's in this 40 hour narrative experience is awesome with regards to the content they put in it and, and, and the lifeblood and the force and the creativity behind it all. It's wonderful and I can't wait to talk more and more in detail specifically about why. But the reason why I bring this up is because one of the more controversial topics about this is people are upset uh, because of the fact that the game is not the entire Final Fantasy VII experience. The entire Final Fantasy VII game from start to finish to complete it, which is something I did recently on Twitch, it took me about 51 hours to do everything. That's maximizing all of the, getting getting to three sets of of materia, master materia, it's getting three enemy skills all maxed out, getting every character to 99, getting all of the limit breaks, defeating all of the weapons, doing everything in the game, about 51 hours. And that was me stumbling to remember things as I was doing it and chat was helping me. So the fact that they took the first part of Midgar and said, we're gonna make it a full-fledged experience with a, with a narrative arc that closes, I wasn't bummed by it, and I know that a lot of people were. And a lot of people are sticking to their guns. I'm not going to buy it at all, or I'm not going to buy it because of the fact that it's not the full game, and Square Enix is going to charge us 180 bucks or 200 bucks. I just don't care about that. To me, the experience of what this game is, is more than enough. Resident Evil 3 Remake, I don't think is worth a $60 price tag. I would say it's probably worth 40 50 bucks, whereas with Final Fantasy VII Remake, I absolutely believe that it deserves to be 60 bucks. Um, the soundtrack alone, the soundtrack alone, it's, they, they made a dynamic soundtrack that just shifts in and out, and every moment is so impactful and specific, and, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make a big video on this, <laughs> and I hopefully this stuff got you excited. So that was my personal update rant in progress video of Resident Evil 3 Remake and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. At this point in time, I've put well over a total of, of 120 hours with both games, and I'm looking to, to still just put in more time. So let me know if you guys like these kinds of videos, if they feel more, more natural and feel more raw and off the cuff. Obviously, I'm just saying what's coming to my head. It's not really organized. And it's not really my style on this on, on the show. Guys, have a great weekend. Be safe. Stay home if you can. Thank you to everyone out there who is putting their lives on the line as an essential employee at all the companies all over the world. I appreciate the hard work that you're putting in. And yeah, I'll see you guys on Wednesday for a New Game Plus episode on WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. So if you're a wrestler fan, a wrestling fan, a wrestler fan, a wrestling fan. Well, actually, you can be a fan of a wrestler. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of The Rock, but I wouldn't call myself a wrestler fan. I would say I'm a fan of wrestlers. There we go. If you're a fan of wrestlers or wrestling games in general, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw is coming out next Wednesday. And then at the end of the week, we have Resident Evil 3 Remake. Guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. I can talk. It's 3 a.m. Good night.